Uh, okay. Now, whoever took the stickers last time can have my last prize. No, I'm kidding. Um, all right, this is your speaker evaluation form. Have you been w uh, informed of that? Okay, so whatever session you're in, if you like to bitch, this is the tool for doing it. Um, it's yellow, it's in your bag, and you just, you know, mark on here who you, who you liked and who you didn't like. So please do that because we take that seriously and we... I know Dan Kaminsky comes back every year, but look, we eventually listen to you. He's not here now. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> takes us a few years, but we eventually listen. Okay, I'm gonna. I think these guys ready. These guys yeah. ready? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, these two guys are speaking about VoIP security, which I think is fascinating stuff, as I mentioned earlier. Um, Jason and John, they're from the Midwest. I'm told they have great teeth and and what else? Good shoes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't want to listen to me, so I'm going to get off stage. But anyway, give it up for these guys. I'm excited to hear them. So. Hopefully I won't have Mike Karma again, right? So my name is John Kindervog. I'm a senior security architect with Vigilar uh, out of Dallas, Texas. And Jason Oberberg is my uh, comrade in arms here. He's a senior security consultant for us at Vigilar in Dallas and wow I got a new mic okay it's a backup because this one just died okay well the mic died too so there we go can anybody hear me I'll just have to speak up okay well the podium mic just died when you came up here it didn't like you Anyway, there, somebody is hacking the audio system. Can anybody? I, I swear I touched it not. Place that one with that one. Test it. Okay. Okay. Bear with us, please. Cisco did this, by the way. We're pretty convinced that somebody from Cisco is doing this to try to silence us to keep our voice from being heard. Hello, keep talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Oh, well they, well they were, you said, yeah, they were. Sorry about that. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, well I've got one person telling me to do one thing. Just go. Okay, we're going to go on. So, uh, what? we're out of Dallas. Texas. We flew in here yesterday, so we're, we're excited to be here in D.C. Uh, about a year ago, we were in the D.C. area taking a class together, spent a week out here, and through the discussions that we were having, we, we came up with what you're seeing today. The, the, I, the ideas uh, the, and the tool and all that stuff really started here in D.C., so it's fun to be back here. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, security in the converged network, why corporations and enterprises and everybody's all excited about voice over IP and why that concerns us as security folks. We'll talk a little bit about the, vis uh, the business risk, some of the attack stuff. We're going to demo uh, the voice VoIP hopper tool and show you uh, why we think there's some real problems in voice over IP networks today, which is the real reason for all this stuff, okay? Uh, so the idea here is, is Jason and I have been working together for many, many years. And one of the things that we've done a lot of is uh, assessments. And, and we've started to do more and more voice over IP assessments. And every company that we go in thinks that their voice over IP network is phenomenally secured. And uh, we're going to show you a little bit later on why we think that's not a true statement. But the, the passivity of the enterprise about the security issues in voice over IP has been something that's been concerning us. And Jason, uh, as our lead security consultant, has toasted many, many voice over IP networks. And the problem is that from an enterprise perspective, if you're a CIO or an IT director, you're excited about this concept of convergence, that we can put all different types of information, voice, data, video, all on the same pipe and reduce our costs make moves, ads, and change easier, all that kind of stuff. We're going to have less cable, right? Because now, instead of running two cables, one for the phone and one for the, for the computer, we can just plug the computer into the phone, and wow, that saves us a lot of cabling costs, time, all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, that phone is a, is a computer, so it has DHCP, so if I need to move offices, I don't have to get my telecom guys and do all kinds of stuff. I just plug it in, it gets an address, and boom, my moves, ads, and changes are, are uh, highly reduced. Uh, theoretically, because I'm on voice over IP and I'm on a network, a lot of my toll charges are gone, so that's part of my TCO. And hey, I can get voicemail in my inbox. How cool is that? I mean, that is a huge driver in a lot of corporations. I can get vo uh, voicemail in my inbox. I don't know how valuable that is, but it's, it's a big selling point. And so at the end of that whole list of convergence and why people are deploying voice over IP technologies becomes security. And it's an afterthought. And in fact, it's so much of an afterthought that, that even today, uh, companies that we work with that we've shown insecurities in their network related to voice over IP still believe their voice over IP networks are uh, secure because the manufacturers say they are. And we're trying to create more awareness uh, within all, all people, the general public, people who do uh, network security or, or IT administrators and say, hey, there's some real things you need to be concerned about. Uh, so we've discovered that there is a phenomenally low awareness as to the security threats of, of uh, voice over IP. This audience is probably a little bit different, but a lot of audiences that we talk to and certainly corporations we talk to think, oh, there's no way, yeah, voice over IP. That's fine, it's great. And so what we have discovered, it, what, what we're going to demonstrate is, is a special kind of, of attack or a proof of concept related to uh, publicly accessible IP phones. Because you go into a, uh, an organization that has IP telephony de deployed, you're going to see phones like this. This is a Cisco phone, but we're, we're vendor agnostic. We've or I will say Jason, I'll give him all the credit here in terms of the genius behind this. But Jason has broken Avaya phones, Nortel phones, Cisco phones, we don't care, voice over IP. Uh, that thing is available in a, in a lobby, in a waiting room of a, of a hotel. Uh, it's in uh, hospitals, all kinds of places, conference rooms. And folks like you can come in and plug your laptop into that or into that, its cable, and you can have access to the, to the corporate data without any problem, that's what we're going to de demonstrate. So through uh, the tool that Jason created and the concepts that were put into place to develop the tool, we've determined that we can gain privilege access through the uh, voice network into the data network. And that, in our opinion, is a significant threat to the enterprise. So if you look at how uh, networks are deployed from an IP telephony perspective, uh, you create a separate VLAN called the voice VLAN that's different from all your other VLANs, which are, in, for the purposes of this pr presentation, just called the generic data VLAN. Uh, and that voice VLAN, the idea is, that's going to keep voice traffic only on that VLAN, and there's not going to be any data traffic on it. And the idea is that this is going to be secure, right? Because how many people think VLANs are a great security measure? If I said that in, uh, in, in the corporate world, most people would raise their hands. VLANs, they're secure, right? So that's one misunderstanding that a lot of people have. Uh, secondly, by putting all your voice traffic on a single VLAN, you can control the quality of service. You can get better quality voice calls. And it allows the IP phones to auto-configure. Um, so the phones will easily associate to a logically separate VLAN. They're designed to be very, very simple. And they also allow the simultaneous access of a regular PC into the phone. So the back of this is a switch port. There's a switch, a regular 10100 switch, and you can plug a computer or a laptop right into it. And that's both good from an IT administrator side and bad from a security perspective because, as Jason's going to show you or talk about, that allows us to bypass a lot of controls. So this is what it generally looks like. There's a voice VLAN in green here that uh, terminates at the phone, and there's a data VLAN that bypasses the phone and goes into the computer. So the idea is, hey, it's really simple to deploy, easy to cable. Uh, IT administrators love it because it makes their job easier, and it truly does. I, my background is as a Cisco networking guy, and I've been involved in a lot of IP telephony deployments. And you can just scan the barcode on that and deploy the phone, and bam, you're done. It's much easier. But from a security perspective, there's some real concerns.